Welcome to, back to Creating Cooperative Kids. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. Questions flood my website from parents looking for help with misbehavior, and I do my best to respond to every one. If you would like to have your question addressed on this show, send it to questions at cooperativekids.com and provide me with as much detail as you can. Now, today's question has to do with bullying in the workplace. The parent writes, I appreciated the tips on your website in regards to bullying and my child, but do you have any suggestions for dealing with bullying who is my boss? With me on the show today is Jim Bouchard, author of the book, Think Like a Black Belt, and national parenting guru, Tina Ray Kelly. Thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having Thank us, girl. So yeah. let's flip this around, because it, the, the common topic in the news and the media is bullies, bullies, kids mm -hmm. in the school. But a lot of us experience bullies in, in the workplace, and I myself have experienced it as well. And it is very frustrating, especially if that bully is allowed to do what he or she is doing to mm -hmm. employees. What's your take on that? Well, it's a $300 billion a year problem. So if you think you're alone, it, you're absolutely not. This happens everywhere. And it, it just, I don't know, I, I can't stop it. I don't think we can stop but it. But why are employers we can letting it happen? You know, today, I think what's happening is it's a very tight job market. So it's not as much that employers are necessarily letting it happen, but people are very afraid to report it. They're very afraid to talk about it because they're trying to preserve their jobs. They're trying to keep that status quo. But you've got, just like we talked about with the kids, you've got mm -hmm. to be strong enough to stand up. You, there's no reason for you to put up with that in the workplace. If it's brought to the attention of the authorities there, there's no reason for them to permit it. But that goes to building a good code of ethics, a good code of, of we call it code of respect in the workplace. And we're very active with helping workplaces develop that. But, 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 mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm assuming what's coming from the, the, yeah. the person who wrote this letter. Mm. Because you, I've seen it. Yep. Bullies are allowed oftentimes because they produce. And like you exactly. said, it's a tough economy. Exactly. So if you've got a, if you've got a manager out there, a mm -hmm. supervisor, a mm -hmm. VP, who's delivering the goods, yeah. a lot of times the mm -hmm. employer looks the other way. So what can an, an employee do? Because an employee can't really do anything about setting standards except your own personal work ethic. Well, and Jim, you can chime in here. I would say it's, it's very similar with kids. The minute you stand up to that bully, mm -hmm. they back down have the confidence to know that what you bring to the workplace is just as valuable and have the confidence to stand up to that bully, state very emphatically what you disagree with, what behaviors you find unacceptable. And I think just that, just empowering yourself in that way, everything we just discussed, changing that posture that we're encouraging in our kids, changing your level of confidence, validating what you bring and stating that. But that's, well, that's what you need as the individual. From the organization yeah. point of view, like I said, it starts with a very clear code of ethics. You've got to have that policy, and you've got to enforce it. You said very often the bully is a producer, right? But check this out. The target of a bully, the direct target of a bully in the workplace, can lose up to 50% of productivity, and associates around that target all right, in the immediate area can lose up to 34% of their productivity. Now start matching that against what that person's producing, you see? And the, the scales tip the scales tip. So you've got to create that code of ethics, that, that workplace policy where if somebody feels they're, they're being bullied or being abused, that they can bring that up, they can bring it up safely, all right, kind of a whistleblower program, right. know they can make that report and know that it will be dealt with, right? But we also have to talk, when we're talking about it in the workplace, we do have to draw some lines. We don't want to sterilize our culture, yeah, right. right? I mean, it's right. easy to say we could end all these problems by just not talking about sex, politics, and religion in the right. workplace, but that's what people like to talk about, right? So we've got to divide what is authentic bullying, what is harassment, and you said it, it's, it's a disproportionate power struggle mm -hmm. there, right? The bully has more power. Uh, flirtation, even if it may be crude, and that's, I'm gonna pass this off to you because as a woman, I think you'd have a, a, a different point of view than I would. We've got to decide, you know, is it harassment, is it bullying, or is it just some guy being rude? And that can be handled much differently, right? Right, and we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't have that confidence, when you don't have that empowerment, that invalidation, knowing what skills, what traits you bring to a situation, I think people become very oversensitive. You know, right. like you mm -hmm. get that, mm -hmm. that jerk just being rude, just flirting, <laughs> yeah. and you start to buy into their behavior, how they're treating you, mm -hmm. versus falling back on what you bring to it and just right. pushing back and knowing that yeah, you're you just obviously don't know me to think you can talk to me that way. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me educate you on who I am. And like you said, that's that little speech applies everywhere. Mm -hmm. Applies to the productivity bully, applies to the the you know, the flirting, the unwelcome yeah. flirting, applies in your marriage. 
apply, exactly, applies exactly. everywhere. Let me educate you on who I am and what yeah. I bring and how I should be treated and dealt with. And remember so. too, it's, it's one thing about uh, when we're talking about kids who are in a public school setting or something mm -hmm. like that and they have to be there and they don't have very many choices, although we could argue that point as well, you know, when it gets bad enough. But you're an adult in the workplace. At a certain point, and I, you know that I'm kind of blunt about these things, but <laughs> you've got to take charge of that. You've got to decide, should I even be here? If you're not getting the reaction that, right, yeah. that, that you want, if you're bringing up an authentic case of bullying and it's not being handled, you've got to make a decision. You, right. may, you may need to leave that workplace. Yeah. Why do you want to be there? That's your life. Exactly. Right? right. Well, just, you know, mm -hmm. just like a, a domestic relationship. You know, exactly, you have a choice exactly. as, as rooted, as committed mm -hmm. as you may be, mm -hmm. and as difficult and challenging as a change may be, mm -hmm. are you being treated well? And, right. and if, if the bully is writing your performance review, <laughs> now that introduces yeah. another thing. If the, if, the, if the person writing in asked, mm -hmm. you know, that was a situation, one of the things I highly recommend is you document yes. everything. Yes, yes, document everything. Your, mm -hmm. your, your own file mm -hmm. with the record of things that took place, conversations, invite people in to come in with you in, in meetings. Exactly, that's one of the biggest things. Talk about it. If it's, again, if it's an authentic case of bullying, it's an authentic case of abuse, talk about it. You're not the only one. I guarantee you're not the only one that's going through that. You're not the only target of that bully. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. I like your comment about when you really compare apples to apples and the mm -hmm. diminished productivity, and then you can put a number on that. Right. Same thing, if that bully is writing your performance review, <laughs> you, how much income are you losing there? So right. turning around saying, this is my job, where else am I gonna, you know, I don't have an opportunity elsewhere. You don't have opportunity here. You're right. being cut off at the knees here. What could you be doing in a different environment mm -hmm. where you'd be allowed to reach that potential? And go to the top. We always tell people to go to the top. If, you're, if it's your supervisor you're worried about, you're not going to get any traction there, right? Go to that person's supervisor. Go to the CEO of the company. When we start talking about these numbers, that CEO is going to open some mm -hmm. eyes. This supervisor may be supervising a shop of 12 or 24 people. How much is that costing at that point, you see? And mm -hmm. it does come down to dollars and cents, unfortunately, but it, but it does. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to go in armed with, right? And that's what, what you said before was really important. You know, if, if, if the experience is getting worse, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, the job market is, is still kind of tough, but you want to evaluate whether it's making any sense for you to, to stay in this job. Because sometimes you got company people who are allowed to be bullies because they can deliver right. the goods, mm -hmm. deliver the products, uh, uh, you know, under budget, on time, if not sooner, and so many companies are so fo focused on, on making sure that we do that. Uh, we've been talking with uh, Jim Bouchard, author of the book Think Like a, like a Black Belt, and uh, Tina Ray Kelly, uh, parenting guru, and you both came down here from Brunswick, Maine, so we appreciate you being here with us and, and giving some, some insight to the folks who oh, watch this honor. program. Yeah, yeah. pleasure. Thank Wonderful. You. Thanks for coming down. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you would like to have your question addressed on the show, simply send in an email with all the details to questions at cooperativekids.com. I'll do my best to respond to you personally and perhaps select your question for the next episode. In today's show, you were provided with some important information to help you determine if self-defense course is right for your child and, and what you can do for him or her. I also uh, helped you determine if your child could likely be a bully or become a victim to bullies. And I close the show with some discussion around bullying in the workplace. Looking ahead, with the help for some early childhood professionals, I'll be dedicating my next show to discipline tools that can be used in the home as well as in the preschool, the preschool classroom environment. I hope you will join me for future episodes of this program as I offer more tools to help you rebuild your discipline toolbox as an awesome parent or teacher. If you'd like to get this program in your local viewing area, contact my office to find out how. Making the world a better place to live begins at home as parents. I'm Bill Corbett, and I'll see you the next time on Creating Cooperative Kids. Just need some time